uh, we're gonna do the unboxing. So I just wanna show uh, you how the, the products, how you're gonna be receiving the products and the sizes and talk a little bit of what I find relevant about the sizes. So the uh, Ear Pro, it comes in boxes like that. And as you showed one of the slides in the beginning, it has different sizes. So it's small, a medium and a large size. One of the challenges when you're learning to use the tool is to decide which size to use. Uh, so probably I would say it would be best if you, uh, if you wanna you know, give it a try to have all, all the sizes with you when you're trying. Um, I have noticed I used more the medium and large size, but I have used the small size a few times. So just so you keep that in mind. When you open the box, um, the earway comes in individual packages like that. Um, I know we are all and we should <laughs> take care of our environment, but I think when we talk about health, uh, safety, it's more important. So I really like when I opened the first time, uh, seeing that it's all you know, uh, nice and clean there. So no, no, no chances of me touching one tool and then picking up the other tool. So that was nice. Um, when you pick it up the, the tool, what I usually do is I open, so it's quite an easy way to open, you just like slide this down. And I, I just have a habit now that I just open like halfway and I pull out and then I grab it so then I don't touch the head of the tool, okay? Thinking about aiming my mind, just infection control, infection control. So then, uh, so we have the tools. So what I wanna show you are, what are the differences between the three sizes, the small and large? So I just wanna put it closer here so you can see. As you can see, the head of the, the tool, the Helix, it's different sizes, of course. Uh, a, a bigger difference between the small to the medium, uh, medium and large is just a little bit. Um, so it's about one millimeter difference. Um, in the box, I forgot to mention that, of course, it comes all the instructions with in all languages. And I was just learning a few things, the details about that, that I didn't know before, reading before this um, webinar. But it has this three different um, uh, sizes of the helix. And you can see as well that it has markers on here, the uh, proximal and the distal marker. So also that will be different uh, in between the three sizes. So for you to have an idea, um, uh, we know that the ear canal length is an average 25 millimeters. So the large size uh, from the distal marker is 23.5, okay? So it's pretty safe. Uh, that gives us a good uh, uh, peace of mind that we're not getting closer to the, uh, you're getting closer, but you're not gonna hurt someone uh, getting to the eardrum when um, you're following the markers, okay? So again, going back to when you're learning uh, or if any, any of you here uh, teach students, um, this is a great tool. Um, it's something that you wanna give them a hands-on, right? Uh, but I think with the other methods and our clinics are not set up like a ENT clinic. So if something goes wrong, it's quite, you know, you're panicky. Um, so it was always very challenging to, to teach the students and, and feel comfortable that my will not hurt my patient. So I, I do feel that's a great tool for people to feel comfortable and even like um, learn a good depth perception of the ear canal as well with the markers. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, I really like the marks the markers on it. Um, the top of the tool, as you I don't know, I don't think you mentioned that yet, but is um, it's covered with silicone. So it's very soft, okay? Compared to when you get a, a curette, when you touch the curette, it's a little sharper. Of course, um, you use them differently because the curette, you're not supposed to touch the ear skin, uh, where the ear pro will touch the ear skin. Uh, but we know sometimes with the curette, things happen and you might hurt hurt a little bit the skin there. Um, what I have not noticed uh, any any try that I had that hurt people's skin with that. Okay, it's, it's very, with that, no, with the ear pro, uh, it's very soft, okay? And flexible as well. So is a single use, uh, as Amy mentioned, great tool now for the, not just now, but especially now that we're talking about COVID a lot. And uh, you just use one time, no sterilization, of course, because of the type of material. And, uh, and the wax, when it gets in there, it really 
you can't really clean it out. Uh, so you're gonna be using one tool and you're supposed to be using one tool for each side, okay? Another thing I haven't mentioned that I like as well is was the, the grip. I, I, I like the grip, uh, it's not as slippery, so it gives me a good grip when I'm holding. Um, a little challenging sometimes in the beginning for you to brace as a little smaller, but you got a hold of it. Um, and I'll talk more about that, how I use the tool um, on my other uh, slide. Uh, but I think that's what I want to show about the, the tool. So I think, uh, Martin, we can uh, go and move to the other slide, please. So hold on. I'm just going to look yes, at where you are now. Share again. Yeah. Yes, please. Okay. Move forward. So can you move to the other one, please? Yeah, there we go. So let's talk a little bit about what are the key elements um, for a successful, for the procedure to be successful. First thing is to select the patient, right? My first patient was my mom. <laughs> I, I didn't have, I just had this mall in, the, in my house and I thought, oh, I might want to try that. Um, was interesting because her UX wasn't uh, fully occluded was kind of halfway, but was a bit looser in the ear canal. So I wasn't sure, but it was quite, quite deeper in the canal. So I didn't want to use the curette. Uh, so the, the first experience I had at the tool was able to bring to closer to the meatus, the, the earwax, um, but I still had to use the curette to finalize the job. Okay, but that was my real first try. So the challenging, I think the first one, sorry, is selecting the patient um, for you to feel comfortable and uh, Perhaps the ones that you will see regularly for your rex removal that has no any other contraindication um, would be the best to give you uh, to feel proficient on it. Um, we do mention in this slide that um, it takes 15 to 20 patients. I felt around uh, maybe 10 patients. I was already feeling pretty comfortable using the tool and selecting the the size. Um, I think the, the, the size is always the, the challenging part. Uh, the type of wax I think is faster. You'll get that quicker, which one is gonna work best. So the second, as I mentioned, is the ear wax type. And we'll talk a bit of, uh, more about that. And, uh, and then the size. So in this slide that Martin is showing, um, we have here types of wax that um, uh, would work best with the Earway Pro. And uh, I definitely have tried I don't think I've tried yet on anybody that had a dry and crumbly wax, uh, but everything else I have tried. Um, the runny, as you can see, pretty much just one type of wax that the tool is not you know, uh, indicated to use. So it's just the runny type of wax. So everything else, um, you can give it a try. Um, important, as I mentioned, my mom's case, um, if the, the wax is not, if you just have a small piece floating in the ear canal, it's not gonna be helpful. You need to have a bit of more occluding uh, type of wax or semi-occluding type of wax. Um, but all this type of um, texture, um, the, the, it can be very successful, okay? So I want to show you now um, a, a picture of a, a real case. Um, if we can jump into that, Martin. Yeah, so this is the first case I want to mention to you. So this was a, a lady, uh, she was around her 80s um, and she came for a hearing test. Ear canal was pretty occluded and we want to do the hearing, uh, hearing test and the hearing aid in the same day. Okay, um, difficult to get into the office. Uh, so she had a friend bring her in. So all we wanna do is this everything the same day. The wax is not too soft, not too hard. Um, it's been there for a while. Um, it was a little deeper, a little further in the canal that I would feel comfortable uh, using the curette. Uh, I didn't wanna use irrigation because I wanna fit in the same day, so it would might affect my rear measurement. And then I said, okay, I'm gonna give it a try with the Yearway Pro. For this lady, um, I use the medium size. Uh, so usually what we have been noticing is if you, if you think that is the small, use the medium. <laughs> if you think the medium is the large. Um, it seems we need a little, because you wanna make sure the tool is englobing the, the wax. Um, and then you, you just like one, um, just one time try and you get everything out, okay? Where when you use something smaller, uh, you might need to go back in, okay? So the, the I think the, the great uh, outcome from that was the look of the eardrum, right? The ear canal was super healthy, wasn't red, 
no, you know, is, wouldn't be too sensitive for me to uh, perform the rear measurement, fit the hearing aids the same day. So I was quite uh, impressed with that. That was great. Uh, the second case was a, is a younger uh, lady, um, and you can see the wax was definitely more wet, not runny, but a little. And you're like, oh my, you know those cases when you look the outside of the wax, you think, oh, that'd be a good one. But then behind that first layer has a big block of wax, right? So I thought, okay, I'm gonna give it a try again with my Yearway Pro and uh, and that's the result, okay? It was one try, um, very easy. It just englobed the full wax and came out, okay? And my third case that I brought, um, that is the, the, the challenging ones when we see in the office and you think, oh my goodness, here we go for dis disrupting my, my calendar because I'm going to have to get this patient to use some softeners or maybe come back or who knows. So um, this was a, a man and uh, I know it was a little drier, right? It's darker, it's been there for a long time. So I, I did mention that to him. He came in because he thought his hearing aid wasn't working. Uh, and he said he had exactly the same condition in both ears and a lot of feedback with the hearing aids. Uh, so I, thought, I told him the issue here is your ear wax. Um, are you good to, to have your ear wax removed? But it's a little drier. We don't have too much time. Um, I can try this new tool and see if, uh, if I can get this out for you. Um, and he said, yeah, go ahead and, and do it. And uh, same idea. I got this out, it was great. Um, a little bit more pressure they feel when it's dry, um, but you can see on the next picture um, the, the, how the wax came out. So it came out to feel it blow, you know, the full wax out, just one try, and uh, which is great. Client was extremely happy and uh, was just a, a great, uh, a great uh, case, okay? So we'll go over now the procedures guideline. And if Martin can just uh, stop sharing these slides, I wanna just uh, show a few things when I'm using the tool. So basically when we're doing the, of course the procedure guidelines is first, we'll take the true history of the, to identify any contraindications and we'll talk more about the contraindications soon. Um, judging the uh, size of the tool, it is, uh, you need to, practice you know, a few times to, to yeah, be good at it. On a good note about that, what I can tell, as you saw on the cases, because the ear canal, you see there was no redness, it really, you know, it's not really painful for the patient. Uh, if I chose the wrong size and uh, the wax was just, it really didn't come out and I thought was the larger size would work best, um, I didn't have anybody telling me that I couldn't go back there with the tool, okay? Because it wasn't very painful. So they, they were thought, no, you can try with the other tool. So that was good. I think for when you're learning, um, don't feel, you know, too uh, concerned if you needed to switch the sizes when you're getting, you know, uh, a hang of it. Uh, so that was great. Um, prepare the client seated. I think Amy showed a good picture there, how we get, um, to have the patient seated. Um, I like to have my stool so my eyes is on the same direction of the ear, ear canal. And then, um, of course, you pull the lobe uh, posteriorly, superiorly, so you want to straighten the, the ear canal well. Um, so we don't have, you know, it's not hitting the well if there's a very bendy type of ear canal. Um, what I usually do that I think that it's, major is to make sure, of course, you're getting the verbal consent, a written consent from the patient, but explaining how the tool works. So I do show them the tool and I show them the markers. Um, they really feel safe that way. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, I have these markers. There's no way I can perforate your drum. Like I'll be very gentle, um, just try to stay still and so on. But what I like to explain them about the markers is when I'm gonna get closer, when I get close to the proximal marker, so that when the proximal marker get right on the meatus of the ear canal, you will start feeling a little pressure. And that's exactly what happens. They feel a bit of a pressure and then you can tell by their face and I, I just stop and 
I make sure they have a hearing aid on the other side if they have hearing aids so they can hear me throughout the procedure. And then I just ask them, uh, are you okay? Can I just twist a little bit more? So what you do with the tool, you twist them clockwise very slowly into the canal. And then when it gets to that uh, proximal uh, marker, I ask them, it's like, are you okay? Can I just twist a little bit more? Because they already knew I, I had to do that. Um, and then I twist a little bit more and uh, it's boom. When it gets close to the distal, they're like, Ooh, okay, that's it. Okay, we got in the right spot. And then what you need to do is you're not gonna twist back. You're just gonna pull straight out. Okay, and very gentle. So if you used the right size of tool, the when the wax is coming out, they feel a bit of a pressure as well. They never reported pain, it's just a pressure. Uh, so that's why it's so important to go really, really slow and, uh, and then out, <laughs> okay? Um, because of the markers, you don't actually need uh, any light, but I personally prefer, uh, with my age, you know, my eyesight is not the greatest anymore. So because of on my role now, I'm moving to different clinics. I just bought myself a cheap light, uh, $80 on Amazon. And, um, and that just helped me to have a good, you know, bright light. And it, I do feel the clients, the patients feel safe as well, that I have like an effective view of the, the ear uh, canal. But you don't actually need, uh, if you don't have to, if you feel comfortable, okay? Because the markers are pretty safe to, to use that, okay? Um, if, I just wanna mention one little thing, um, if you, when you're removing it, if you don't feel much retention, um, it means you probably didn't engulf the, the wax completely. So you might need to use a, a bigger size. You will see that you might got just a little smaller piece. But when you grab the, the, the whole wax, it, it, you'll feel a bit of a retention. So you know it's, it's coming out and they feel a bit of a pressure as well, but never a pain, okay? So these would be, I think I went through, oh, uh, and then bracing. Sorry, I haven't mentioned that. So definitely bracing is, is a big part of it. Uh, and as I mentioned, it's a smaller tool, but it, you, you, you learn how to use that. It's a little harder for me on the left side, uh, but not, not a, a big issue uh, to brace as well. And the contraindications, if Martin wanna just uh, switch to that. Excellent. Christiana, we received a question before we move to the contraindications. Uh, it was about um, uh, ear drops, what kind of ear drops you would recommend from Carrie's Scar. And uh, also the, um, uh, we also re received a question regarding blood thinners. What, would you, what is your uh, opinion, recommendation? And you're muted. Christiane, you're muted right now. Okay, I'm back. Yes. I'm back. Okay. Back. So um, for the the product that I would use, what I have noticed, I don't want to get my wax too soft. So I don't want to use anything that dissolves the wax as you would use for irrigation, for example, uh, because it's easier with the tool keeping them a little firm. It comes out easily. Okay, with them with the tool. So I personally, to be sincere, I haven't had to use any softener. Even that harder one, um, yeah, it depends on their tolerance for pain, but there's no pain. So I don't know. I would probably suggest to use more just a, a, a mineral oil, like something that just to keep it a little soft. Uh, but not anything that dissolves that the wax. Okay, so that would be. I would rather have my wax a little, you know, intact, like the the the, the shape of it. Okay, yep. so I didn't feel so even that dry case that I showed, and um, even for what you, the, your next question that is about the blood thinners, I have a good story about that. I had a very similar case of that dry type of wax, and this patient was on blood thinner. Um, because I had used the tool quite a few times before, and uh, I, I feel very confident that it doesn't really, uh, doesn't harm the skin of the ear canal. I gave it a try, okay? So this patient came in, he's in a wheelchair, same idea, daughter bring in, we don't have that much time. He had, he, was, he had just one hearing aid the same year, plugged with wax, so no communication with that patient. So I need to remove this wax today. Um, I used the tool 
and uh, it came out easily like that picture I showed you and was kind of drier the same way and he was on blood thinners ear canal was just intact no issues whatsoever so I feel comfortable even if they're on blood thinners I think it's something of course I will mention to them what are the risks I need to be prepared if there is some bleeding what you do um, but nothing happened so I wouldn't be too concerned about uh, blood thinners.